Hey, this is Jordan. As you can see, I've got a couple of computer parts back here. I'm building an AI machine. I'm going to be mainly focusing on creating images and videos in stable diffusion, building AI applications, and training AI models. Well, let's get started building this computer. I'm installing the power supply upside down because I wanted to be able to intake the air from inside of the computer and push it out. I also had to purchase an additional PCIe cable because the power supply only supplied three cables. Now you could get by with just plugging in three PCIe cables to the RTX 4090, but since I had purchased this expensive card, I wanted to be able to maximize the amount of performance. If you do decide to purchase an additional PCIe cable, you definitely want to check the manufacturer's website to make sure that the cable type is the same cable type as from the website that you're purchasing it from. In my case, it's type four. So I made sure that it was type four when I was buying it, because if you don't have the same type of cable, you run the risk of damaging your graphic card or your power supply. When you're assembling your computer, make sure you've got the manual, either a physical copy or the one online from the manufacturer's website. That way you avoid making mistakes. I've got the motherboard out here and I'm installing the CPU, the RAM sticks, and the NVMe SSDs. A thing to keep in mind when installing the RAM sticks is that you want to make sure that you are using the dual channels if you only have one set so that you're able to get the maximum amount of performance out of your RAM. When I was installing the NVMe sticks, this was my first time doing it, and I thought I could just push it down with the heatsink on top, but you need to make sure that you push it down until you hear the click, and then you put on the heatsink. The other NVMe stick, it was easy. You just unscrewed the plate, and then you put it in. Another thing to keep in mind with the RAM is that make sure you install that before you install the heatsink, because once you get the heatsink on there, depending on which one you bought, you're not going to be able to put in or take out the RAM. Here I'm installing the CPU bracket. Now, this is the part where reading the manual is very important. There's two separate types of sockets that you could use with this frame. The one that I have is the LGA1700. And when you use that socket type for this bracket, you need to make sure that you're using setting two. So just remember two and remember using the blue spacers. When installing the support brackets for the CPU heatsink, it's important to know which direction you want the fans to blow in. Keep in mind when you're installing the brackets, the heatsink will sit perpendicular to how you have installed the brackets. When cleaning your heatsink or your CPU, make sure that you use isopropyl alcohol 99%. You don't want to use anything less because it's less pure and that might cause erosion on your CPU or heatsink. Since the CPU is a rectangular shape, I'm going to use the X pattern instead of the dot pattern when applying my thermal paste. I used too much when I first put on the thermal paste, so I had to clean it up and apply it again. Unfortunately, I got some on my pants, so you want to avoid trying to get it on your clothes because it is hard to remove, but you can get it off. I used just some OxyClean and some isopropyl alcohol 99 to remove it and do a few cycles of wash and it removed most of it. You could still kind of see it, but for the most part, it's gone. Another thing that I noticed when I was installing the heat sink for the first time is it's very difficult to push it down and screw it in at the same time. It's got a lot of resistance because of the spring. When I was doing it, I could feel it wobble at the bottom. And when it wobbles at the bottom, you're going to get air that is going to go in there and get trapped in the thermal paste. And when you wobble it around, it just makes it worse. And that's another reason why I removed the heat sink and cleaned it up and applied it again. Applying the dot is a lot easier to do than applying any sort of lines. I recommend if you're doing the X shape, since it is hard not to put on a lot of thermal paste, is 
you squeeze out a little bit and you push it down on the CPU. And then once it has contact, you just keep pushing it down and then stringing it out, pushing it down and stringing it out until you get the finished X. It's a little difficult. You have to be very uh, finesse with it. You'll have to remove the middle fan from the heatsink when installing it so that you're able to screw it down to the support bracket. Then you'll have to figure out which direction you want the fans to be blowing in. You could take a look on the casing. There should be arrows that will be pointing which direction the air will be flowing. Now, if you don't have that, you could take a look at the shape of the fan. If the fan is shaped like a convex, that means that it's going to be intaking that air and exhausting it out the other side. This is a good time to check the cables to make sure that your fans aren't hitting them. So just spin them around and see if there's any resistance. Because after I finished building my computer and turn it on for the first time, I heard it going like... <laughs> so it was hitting one of the cables. And if you're able to fix it now, it's a lot easier than fixing it when everything's all put together. Now it's time to finally put the motherboard into the case. It was pretty easy. The only two places that were difficult to screw down were near the CPU. The heatsink kind of blocked the way and you need a longer screwdriver to be able to tighten it down. The fractal torrent case has a fan hub in the back of the computer. You could poke the cables through the front of the computer. There's some holes there that you're able to push it through to be able to connect it to the back. And as you can see in this diagram here, you attach the SATA to the power, and you attach the ground to the CPU connector in the front of the motherboard, which is right beside the LED connector, which came with the case. Most of the cables are in the back here, and the cables that I need to plug in the front are the USB cables and the HD audio cable and the LED cable. This is where the USB cable goes and this is where the other connection went for the USB. And here is the front panel. If we unplug this here and then we could take a look at the the arrow here. That arrow means that that's the positive side. Let's plug this back in here. And here is the HD audio plugin. And this here is the LED plugin, and this is what it lights up. Here, I'm installing the GPU support bracket. If we take a look at the manual, it tells you how to set it up. It's fairly easy. It's time to install the big boy. This was fairly easy to install. The GPU is a little tight by the heatsink, but you just need to fiddle around with it a little bit. Don't push too hard if you're not certain. You can't really see what you're doing. You just have to go by feel. Another very important aspect to the RTX 4090 is the power clip. You want to make sure that it's seated all the way into the socket because there have been issues where it would melt if it's not properly seated. And that goes for any of the plugs that you plug in. Just do a little tug to see if it comes off once you plug it in. And if you could wiggle it free, then it's not clipped in properly. So just really push in and make sure that it's seated properly. Here's the GPU supporting bracket carrying all the weight of the RTX 4090. When I initially bought all the parts for my machine, I didn't get everything that I needed because I didn't know there was going to be some parts that were missing. Like I mentioned before, the power supply only had three PCIe cables, so I had to purchase another PCIe cable to be able to get the maximum performance out of my RTX 4090. And I wanted to plug in the CPU fan to the fan hub in the back. And I didn't have enough length to do that. So I had to also purchase an extension fan cable so that I could plug it into the back of the fan hub so that I'd be able to see it in the BIOS because I wasn't able to see it there. And there you have it, the completed build. Now sit back and enjoy watching me put the case back together as we listen to some nice music for a few seconds before we try to turn it on.
you're probably wondering why I'm underneath my table here. Well, I've got to put my new PC down here just for a bit while I get it installed because someone is taking its space. Great. This is the moment of truth. Let's turn it on. Pressing the power button. Well, it was in this moment he knew he forgot to check the CPU cables hitting the fan. I had to use a very long screwdriver and try and prod it through the fans. It was very awkward to push it out of the way, but I got it. Let's make sure that everything that we installed into our computer is here. You can see I've got the CPU installed, I've got all the RAM, 128, we've got all of them here, didn't have any SATA devices, we've got our PCI card here which is our RTX 4090, and then we have our two NVMe slots, uh, hard drives. Our system temp is good, you know, you leave it running a little bit, make sure that it's not too hot or it changes drastically, otherwise you might have an issue. And I'll talk about XMP in a bit. We want to enable that because on the sticks of RAM, it says it's rated for 5600. And here it says that it's 4800. We'll fix that later. And we fix that by enabling XMP. As you can see, it doesn't appear like I have any fans that are working, but they are working. You just can't see them in the BIOS. I didn't have an extension fan cable so I could plug in the CPU fan into the back of the fan hub assembly. I had plugged it into the CPU optional port on the front of the motherboard. But I wanted to be able to see it in the BIOS and that's why I got the extension and now it's working. You just can't see it here because I had done it after the fact. Anyway, let's go and update the BIOS. When I first tried to install the BIOS, I ran into a BIOS error. Yeah, I ran into an error. I got a BIOS ID error, and I was like, this is the exact motherboard that I have. It's the Z790 Aorus Elite AX Revision 1.0. And I was like, Revision 1.0, okay. And I looked at my box here, and if you look at it here, you could say, you could see that it says Revision 1.1. So I was like, oh, so it's very, very, very similar. Something that's very easy to, uh, to miss. So I click here to go to the other revision and I'll download it from here. Now we definitely have the right one. Before I had the version 1.0 BIOS update and this is the 1.1. Yes, let's update the BIOS. Cross our fingers, hope the power doesn't go out. All right, not quite yet. I guess now this is when we cross our fingers. It's definitely restarting a ton. You know, it was like off for about four minutes. So just be patient and wait for it. Look, there it goes again. And here we go. Yep, I looked this up and it basically means that the BIOS is updated, which is great. So we could restart it without worrying that something went wrong. I'm just gonna do that right now. I'm installing Windows 11 on my PC. Now I'm just going through this quickly. I've selected basically no to any of the extra software or any of the privacy settings. I just said no. Boom, Windows 11 installed. All right, XMP time. This is where I ran into a few issues and it took me a while to figure out. You'll want to change the XMP profile to number one if you're using the same RAM sticks as I am. And you'll want to go to the tweaker setting and go down to system memory multiplier. Change it from auto, double click it, and then type in 5600. 
and then press enter. Once you press enter, it will auto populate as DDR5 5600 and then save and exit. Now, for me, I left it as 4800 because I wasn't too sure what this setting did and my machine crashed all the time. I couldn't even get it to boot. If you're working in the BIOS and you're trying to get XMP to work and making sure you get all the performance out of the RAM sticks that you bought, you're probably going to run into your machine not booting up properly. And when that happens, you need to reset the BIOS configurations. And it's right back in there. And you can't really get it like this. But I'll show you a trick. What you have to do is you open up the front here. You take that off. So if you move to the back here, your finger through this flap where the GPU is, right here. I don't know if you could see the button, but it's right here. You could definitely feel it with your finger. And then you just push it. And it resets it. I held it down for like five seconds. And there you go. That's the easiest way to press it. Then you don't need to take off your GPU. Now I'm going to show you the airflow of the case. Starting off with blue, which will represent the air being intaked by the fan. We've got the bottom three fans here intaking the air. We have the two front panel fans intaking the air here, and the two CPU fans intaking the air, as well as the power supply intaking the air, and the RTX 4090 intaking the air here. Now I will mark the exhaust as red. Now you could see that this is a very efficient airflow case. This was one of the biggest factors in why I purchased this case was because of the fans at the bottom of the computer. When looking up online, I found that there were a lot of cases that didn't have any fans at the bottom and it would get this dreaded heat spot where it would have a hard time dissipating the heat that the graphic card would produce. And that's why I went with this case. Another tip, as I was taking all the boxes away and cleaning up here, I realized that I forgot to mention you should keep all your boxes. You never know when you're going to be traveling and having those boxes are great because you know that they're form fitting to whatever part. So keep your boxes. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. I'll have a lot of content in regards to stable diffusion, creating AI applications and training AI models. So if you want to join this journey with me and explore the world of AI, subscribe and I'll see you next time. All right, it's time to go. Apply. Oh, Good night, sweet prince.